In this video, we are using Affinity Designer to create its color blending effect. We will be using a non-destructive method, so you can dynamically change the content and colors. So, let's get started. Create a new document with pixel units. Make sure you have enabled show grid from the wheel menu. Then zoom in and draw a rectangle in size 10 by 10 pixels. This size value is very important, you will know why later. Now give this square a name called math. And then make a copy of it, rename it to gradient. Press G switch to gradient 2, drag on the object to give it a gradient color. I've given it yellow to red gradient color. After that, here is a thing you should know first. I've used 30 objects to build this phoenix. It matters the height of this gradient object. In this case, I will use 30 as well, so I multiply 30 times of its height, which is 10 times 30 is 300. Next, I will align and put this gradient object into the math object. Well, indeed, it has been math by math object also. Now we have finished the first part. Next, I will use the text object for the shapes. I'm going to use a fans. You can pick a font that you like. You can make a perspective transform for now or later. If you transform it now, you will have a fixed perspective view angle in the result. But you will have a front view for the text editing. like this, unless you convert this text to a symbol twice. Now I will transform it first. Let's convert this text into a symbol. Well, if I convert it directly, it doesn't have a name. So let's undo that. Press Command G to make a grip and then give a name called Main Object. At this time, click the Create button in the Symbol panel. The symbol will have its name. I'm going to rotate this main object 45 degrees. Command G make a group and lower his height, align it to the center of the square, and scale it down to a small size. To make sure it won't be going outside of the square, like this or maybe we can ungrip it it doesn't matter hold down your command key and click you select the content inside the symbol change text alignment to center to make sure it will always stay inside the square when the text being added oh i forgot one thing we should convert this gradient object to a symbol too if you don't have this symbol panel, you can find it from the window menu. Okay, let's drag and drop the main object over the master theme now in the layer panel. It will mask the master object. So this is what we got. One piece is not enough. I'm going to create the phoenix. As I mentioned before, the phoenix is made by 30 copies of the main object. So press the Enter key to bring up this move and duplicate dialog. Type in 10 in vertical field because the mass object size is 10 by 10. And then check the duplicate checkbox. Copy it 29 times, including the current one. 
We have total thirty. Don't forget to slag insert new items behind. It will put each new copy object below the previous one. Then click OK. Now we have thirty objects here. If you are not sure how many objects here, you can select them all, and you will find the total number at the bottom left corner of Affinity Designer here. As you can see, each gradient object's position is relative to the masked object. The second gradient object is exactly ten pixels away from the first one. Which means we can select the first gradient object and click on the select menu, select scene, select scene name. Now we have all gradients selected. All we need to do is align them to the top one. It is something like all the gradients position is fixed, but the mask position doesn't change. So every object now has their own color, and because there are lots of space among the objects, we will fix this by using alignment function. Click alignment button on the toolbar. If you can't find it, you can right click and select custom toolbar. You can drag the icon here onto the toolbar and then click OK. Now click the alignment button to select. Align vertically, space vertically. Uncheck Auto Distribute. It will align you to enter the number of space distance. You can hold down Option key and scroll your mouse wheel over the input field. It will increase or decrease the number in steps of 0.1. It needs a very small number to make the thickness right. That's because our objects are very small. So let's leave it here for now. We'll fix this later. I'm going to select all and put them into a group so that I can scale them up together. Now their size are bigger. At this time, you can set the space value again to get the thickness right. After that, select the bottom object, move it down a little bit, click FX icons in the layers panel, and give it some. Gaussian blur. Press 5 in your numpad to set its opacity to 50. Now it's done. Oh, we should move the group. Well, let's move it to the center and get it up. It seems that we have a little problem here with the shadow. Let's open the layer effects menu panels again and check on scale with object. It will make the burnish change along the scaling of the object. We are almost done here. Now add an artboard to contain the object and another two artboards. I don't want the decimals in the size or coordinate. You can hover your mouse over the fields of transform panel and scroll the mouse wheel. This will turn decimals into integers. Hold down shift key to scroll it will change the number in steps of 10. Let's rename these artboards. I will name this artboard as final and this is main object. And the last one should be colored. Drag main object symbol from symbol panel to the artboard and scale up. Same for the gradient symbol. 
lock the final artboard. Now if you change the content in main object or change the color in gradient, you will get the result in the final view. Oh, there's one more thing. Because we are using text to make it square, if there is too much content in the text, the text might be cut off by the square. Let me show you. I'm trying to add more content in the text object. It's not enough. I need more characters. Funny. It seems quite safe for the size. Wait a second, I'm trying to figure out what's happening. Okay, I got a problem. You can see the blue box outline here, right? If we move the text outside the range, then you get this cut off edge. How to solve this problem in this situation? Technically, you just need to scale down the content to make sure the main object will be covered by the mask object. Then it won't be cut off. Because we scale down the content in the main object, we should scale up the whole group to maintain the size. But there is another problem here. As you can see, its phoenix increased now, which means we need to redo the alignment again. Oops, sorry. Just like the last time we did. Hold on motion key and scroll the mouse wheel to make the fine turn. Well, that's it. By the way, there is a fun trick here. Let me delete some of the text first. Now select the content inside the main object and rotate it. The final view is quite like a 3D effect, right? Well, that's all for this tutorial. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss the latest updates. Hope to see you soon. Bye.